Today we're gonna make a pasta sort of in the style of my weekday sauce, but what we're gonna do is make it a bit more seasonal, give it a little bit of a twist for the holidays. We're making a butternut squash pasta with crispy sage, replacing the tomato puree with a butternut squash puree, and replacing the basil with fresh sage. Give it that kind of fall flavor. It's gonna form a really delicious sauce. It's gonna have a little bit of a sweet flavor, so we're gonna add a little spice to it to balance it out. And even if you don't like butternut squash, I really think you're gonna like this one. Plus, it's a sneaky way to get your kids to eat some vegetables. So let's just jump right into it. This recipe and all my holiday recipes are gonna be in my holiday plan of attack. The E version is linked down below. Somebody made a, printed me a real book and sent it to me, so this is one of one. One day we'll get to a book, hopefully, but if you want all my holiday recipes, there's a link down in the description if you wanna go check it out. Starts with butternut squash that we're gonna dice up into roughly the same size. First, we gotta peel it, though. We're just gonna cut this into dice. We're just gonna cut it where the bulb becomes a little thinner. We're just gonna cut this into threes. And then each piece into three again. Maybe four for this guy. And just dice them up. Get them into a pot. So we're gonna cut this guy into fours. I'm just gonna scoop out these seeds. Just use a spoon and scrape. And then we're just gonna maybe cut these into halves and then dice those halves up. Now we're gonna fill this up with water until we cover the butternut squash. And then I'm gonna add some salt. I'm gonna put a lid on them, bring it up to a boil, put it down to a simmer, and just cook them until they're very soft, 15, 20 minutes. You'll know when a fork can easily puncture through them, zero resistance at all, then they'll puree up nice and smooth. While that's coming up to a boil, what we're going to do is we're gonna take a sprig of sage and we're gonna pick off the leaves. Some of these nice big leaves. These are, we're gonna fry up in some oil. We're gonna get them crispy and this is gonna be the garnish we serve on top. While we take the stem and we're gonna use the stem to flavor the sauce. I'm just making one portion so I'm only gonna fry up a few sage leaves. If you're making more, just imagine, you know, five crispy sage leaves on top of the bowl as garnish. So that's how you can sort of think about it. Let's set these aside. I've got about a tablespoon of red chili flakes. You can add as much or as little as you like. I know butternut squash is on the sweeter side. So by adding spice, I know it's sort of gonna balance out that sweetness with a little bit more savoriness. You could also use like Calabrian chilies would be really nice. Garlic, we're gonna slice thinly. Chili and our garlic. We got some Parmigiano Reggiano too for the end. Pasta of choice today is gonna to be penne retorte, which means twisted. So twisted penne. It's short, it's got the big hole, it's gonna kind of hold the sauce really nicely. So as you can see, they won't even hold the fork, so they're done. Now that's really hot. It's really dangerous to blend stuff when it's that hot. So we're just gonna give it a minute, let it simmer down, and then we can go ahead and start the puree. All that steam is what's dangerous. You try and put the lid on, build up that pressure of the steam, and then add that force of the blender, you're gonna cause an eruption. So now I'm gonna start to kind of figure how much water I'm gonna need. So, I don't know, maybe half, halfway, a cup of water. We don't want it too thick because we know it's gonna reduce and when you add pasta, the pasta's gonna thicken it as well. So we have to sort of think a bit like that. 
I'm just gonna get started. I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow a little bit of air out in the beginning. I'm gonna do pulse. You see how it's still got a, like a thick graininess to it? If we just add a bit more water, we can get it down to a thinner, smoother state. Sounds like a bird. You hear that? You see, that's what happens if you go too crazy. You gotta be careful of that. Still a little thick, so I'm gonna add a bit more water. It should look like a tomato puree or a passata. Now just imagine this is tomato sauce. Now we can just go make a pasta, and to me it makes sense. So we've got everything prepared. We can go on over the stove and finish the pasta. Get a pot on medium heat. I'm using a pan here just so it's easier to see things. Get some olive oil in there, coat the bottom of the pan, and then we're gonna fry off this sage using one to test the oil. If there's no bubbling, it's not ready yet. Once you toss them in, then the oil slightly bubbles. Just lower the heat. You don't wanna fry these too hard. Keep them moving, flipping them occasionally. Once you start to see them turning dark green, then you can get them out of the oil and they're just gonna be lightly crisp. If they start to turn brown, you've gone too far. Then add the sliced garlic, sage stem, and the red pepper flake. Cook that until the garlic begins to slightly brown. Turn the heat off, let that oil simmer down before adding the butternut squash puree, or else you're gonna get a lot of bubbling action going on. Add the butternut squash puree and start to work in that garlic-infused olive oil into the puree. Cook it on a low simmer, trying to avoid a lot of splattering going on. It'll be a lot easier in a tall rimmed pot. Season the butternut squash, and then we can get some salt in a big pot of water and start to cook this pasta. I'm only gonna use a half pound today. Now with the tomato sauce, we usually are cooking water out of it, but this is the opposite. This starts out a bit thicker, and we're trying to get it back down to the right smooth consistency to make into a pasta sauce. So we're gonna need to adjust with some pasta water. Check again for a seasoning and then adjust as necessary. You can remove that sage stem right now if you'd like. That consistency is still a little thick for me, so I'm gonna add a bit more pasta water, try and get it a bit smoother. That's better. I'm gonna store about half of this because I'm only making a half batch of pasta. Pull the pasta about two minutes prior to being perfectly al dente. Now finish the pasta in the butternut squash sauce, adding pasta water as needed to create a nice smooth consistency. Once the pasta is al dente, we're gonna kill the heat and we're gonna finish with some cold butter. And since it's the holidays, I have some of this truffle butter and I'm gonna work that in. If you don't have it, no problem, use regular butter. The sage has this tender little crisp to it with that nice sage flavor. It really adds to that flavor profile you want with butternut squash. I really get the essence of tomato sauce. Obviously not tasting of tomatoes. Definitely a little sweeter, but it's got that flake, chili flake, so it's got that heat at the end. I know a lot of you might think, eh, butternut squash, why am I gonna make that into a sauce? But I really think you should give it a shot. I think you're gonna love it. Don't forget to pick up your holiday plan of attack, linked down in the description, the ebook version, obviously not this version. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that pasta. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. I have a big giveaway going on over on Instagram, giving away a Rockbox pizza oven. You're not gonna wanna miss this, so I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to the giveaway. Make sure you go check that out too if you wanna enter to win. Thanks to my patrons scrolling up on the screen. You Don't forget, you guys get this plan of attack for free, so head on over to Patreon and grab the link and the password for that. That's it for me, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.